Eclipse season is back and this month is kind of special because we're getting not just one but two celestial events. First, we've got a total lunar eclipse, yeah, a blood moon, where the moon is going to turn this deep reddish colour. And then, just a couple of weeks later, there's going to be a partial solar eclipse. So, it's a pretty exciting time for sky watchers. OK, let's start with the big one. The total lunar eclipse. This is happening on the night of March 13th into the early hours of March 14th. And fun fact, that's actually Pi Day. So, yeah, math and astronomy coming together. Now this is the first total lunar eclipse of 2025 and it's going to be a good one. So what's actually happening during a total lunar eclipse? Well basically the Sun, the Earth and the Moon all line up in a straight line. The Earth is right in the middle, blocking sunlight from directly reaching the Moon. And instead of the Moon just going dark, something really interesting happens. The Earth's atmosphere bends some of the sunlight, scattering away the blue light and letting the red and orange light pass through. That's why the moon ends up looking red. It's the same reason we see those warm colours during sunrises and sunsets. Now, lunar eclipses go through a few stages. First, there's the penumbral phase. This is when the moon starts to move into Earth's outer shadow, the penumbra. It's kind of subtle, so if you're not paying close attention, you might not even notice it. Then comes the partial eclipse phase. This is when a dark curve starts creeping across the moon. That's Earth's shadow moving in. And finally, we reach totality. This is the main event. The whole moon is covered by Earth's shadow and it turns that deep red colour. This phase lasts for about an hour, so there's plenty of time to take it all in. Now, who gets the best view? Well, uh, North and South America are in for a treat. The eclipse starts late on March 13th and continues into the early hours of March 14th. If you're on the east coast of the US, the eclipse begins at 11.57pm Eastern Time. Totality happens at 2.26am and ends at 3.31am. If you're in parts of Europe or Africa, you'll catch the eclipse early in the morning on March 14th, just before sunrise. And even if you're outside these regions, you might still see part of it, like a partial eclipse or at least the penumbral phase. OK, so moving on, we've got another event coming up just two weeks later, a partial solar eclipse on March 29th. Now, a partial solar eclipse happens when the moon moves between the Earth and the sun, but they don't align perfectly. So instead of completely blocking the sun, the moon just covers a part of it, making it look like a bite was taken out of it. One super important thing, never look directly at a solar eclipse without proper eye protection. Regular sunglasses won't cut it. You need eclipse glasses or a solar filter for your camera if you're planning to take pictures. So, who's going to see this partial solar eclipse? It's mainly visible in parts of northern Canada, Greenland, the Arctic and some areas of Europe and Russia. And while we're talking about cool sky events, let's not forget about the March equinox. This happens twice a year when the sun is directly above the Earth's equator, giving nearly equal day and night across the globe. This equinox marks the start of spring in the northern hemisphere and autumn in the southern hemisphere. Cultures around the world have celebrated this for centuries. Like in Mexico, there's a pyramid at Chichen Itza that cast a shadow resembling a serpent slithering down its steps. And in Japan, the equinox signals the start of cherry blossom season. Also, for those of you into astrophotography, the Milky Way's core is making a comeback. Around this time of year, it starts becoming visible again in the early morning hours before dawn. So, if you're up for some late night or early morning sky watching, now's a great time to get out there. Alright, that's a lot to take in. Two eclipses, an equinox and the Milky Way's return. It's definitely a packed month for astronomy fans. If the skies are clear where you are, try to catch at least one of these events. And uh, yeah, if you're taking pictures, feel free to share them because honestly, it's always cool to see what everyone captures.